Feelings of anxiety and stress are unfortunately at an all-time high, and in today's video, I would like to share with you a recently published study that found that breath holds and breath retention can dramatically alter in a favorable manner brain chemistry that can mimic some of the changes that is seen in experienced meditators. So this was a fascinating new study, and I think it's really relevant to everything that's going on in the world from Afghanistan to all the COVID stuff. I mean, the world is pretty uncertain right now. And so in today's video, I want to share with you a solution that I leverage and draw upon all the time to better manage my stress. And I'm not just going to share with you anecdotal reports of what I find to be helpful. What we're going to do today is review a recently published study in a free diver. Now, free divers are unique in that they can hold their breath for an extended period of time. And so neuroscientists actually looked at the brain response in a free diver and found the brain response actually correlates to seasoned or expert meditators using EEG measurements and uh, functional magnetic resonance imaging techniques, fMRI. So I would like to share this with you because when you hear that you should meditate, a lot of people say they've tried meditation and I've done Vipassana 10 week courses, you know, full silent meditation days. And I find that hard to make it a consistent habit. Whereas once I learned breath work from Josh Trent and Aaron Alexander, I found that to be very effective and I bookend my day with it. I start my day with breath work and go into a meditation and end my day with a breath work session and go into a meditation. So let's talk about some of the science here and really let's launch this conversation with why should you care? Well, if you're new to our podcast or our video series, I want to welcome you back. It's Mike Mutzel. And recently we published a video uh, that looked at over 540,000 hospitalizations from the last year. It was, I, I think, like March to March 2020 to 2021. And one of the most surprising findings from that was the second leading risk factor for mortality from COVID-19 was not obesity or hypertension that we've been hearing a lot about in the media. It was previous diagnoses, diagnoses of anxiety or a fear-based disorder. So individuals who had high levels of anxiety, high levels of fear are much more likely to, to succumb to viral infections and have worse outcomes. Now, this is important because how stress and anxiety and fear, it impacts your body's immune system in a negative way. It increases gut permeability. Uh, it affects from the psychoneuroimmune, psychoneuroimmune endocrine axis. So PNEI, you can Google and read much more about that. Now, and with everything going on in Afghanistan, I just had to share this with you because, again, breath work is so phenomenal. We'll demonstrate just a little session before we leave uh, today. But let's get into some of the science about this. Now, this is not the first study in experienced breathwork practitioners to show that there's a favorable change within the brain and also the immune system. So a study we've talked about before that I would encourage you to check out and read is titled The Influence of Concentration Meditation on Autonomic Nervous System Activity and the Innate Immune System Response. So it turns out when we alter our breath, we alter both our mindset and our immune system in favorable manners. And so uh, really important stuff. I would like you to start and try to make a habit out of this. Uh, please check out Wim Hof's information. I've purchased his course. I've been through like a third of it because I already kind of set up my practice uh, learning from Josh Trent, who also has a course as well, by the way, and he's a past podcast guest. I will link some of that information. He taught me this warrior breath, which I will demonstrate after we go through some of the science. So the article that we're going to talk about today, which is just fascinating, uh, you can read the full text PDF again in the show notes and I'll link it below, mapping the functional brain state of a world champion free diver in static dry apnea. And this was published in the art uh, the journal Brain Structure and Function. So what's unique about freedivers is they practice uh, intentional dry static apneic events, which means they are not breathing. Now, you might be confused with, well, wait, I've heard of sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is bad, but now you're telling me to hold my breath. How can that be good? Well, it turns out this is where context really matters. So if you're unintentional about your apnea when you're sleeping and you're breathing through your mouth and your tongue is you know, paralyzed from the neurology of sleep and REM sleep and it collapses on your airway, well, guess what's going to happen? You have sleep apnea and all of these negative sequelae follow that from increased free radical stressors, uh, hypertension, increased risk for a myriad of different diseases, even leptin alterations, memory changes, a reduction in the signaling of what's known as the default mode network in your brain, uh, a, a stress response is like it's it's all these bad things that you don't want. What, what these scientists actually found is none of that happened in this intentional static apneic event, meaning when you are intentional about holding your breath, 
it does the exact opposite uh, in terms of your stress response, changing the alpha wave power in the brain, and also improving the signaling of the default mode network, which, by the way, is altered in states of dementia, mild cognitive impairment, uh, anxiety, and depression. So there's this sort of network of uh, brain structures that, that communicate in crosstalk, and those are linked with feelings of uh, self-awareness and perception and all of this. So this is really important. So just a little bit of background, you know, manipulating your breath is a great way to get into a meditative state. And that would be my qualm with, and I love Vipassana and the Insight Meditation Society and the Insight Meditation Timer is phenomenal. I highly recommend checking that out. Uh, there's nothing wrong with, you know, transcendental meditation and, and all of these different types of meditation. But I have just found for myself, and maybe this is just me, uh, it's hard to just sit down and meditate it's way easier to get into that calm, relaxed state if you do some breath work prior to it. So what we're doing is a multimodal approach, and I would encourage you to do that. When you're feeling stressed out, when you're overwhelmed, when you're hearing about what's going on in Afghanistan, what's going on in the schools, what's going on in the world, there's all sorts of uncertainty. This lack of perceived control is one of the most damaging forms of stress. And I would like you to utilize your breath, utilize your mind to sort of regain that, that perceived uh, control. What we need to understand is free drivers draw upon a range of physiologic and mental techniques to achieve prolonged breath holes, also known as prolonged voluntary apnea. As discussed recently in a podcast that we did with Patrick McEwen, definitely check that out. His book is absolutely phenomenal, his new updated book. He's the author of The Oxygen Advantage. So breath holds actually help your body build up your tolerance for carbon dioxide. And that's important because that is carbon dioxide is one of the main chemical messengers that triggers the urge to breathe. So the more that you can become tolerant of carbon dioxide, the less breaths you need. And so the optimal amount, and we've talked about this with James Nestor, the author of Breathe, phenomenal book. We did a podcast with him as well. I would highly recommend re-listening to both of those because your breath is very, very important. It's a vital sign that has been unfortunately ignored, but it's critically important because we're in the midst of a respiratory virus pandemic and we need to have optimal functioning of the airways. Now, this is also important because after an infection, we know that the lungs can you know, have some histologic or tissue damage. So breath work can be very important. So by slowing down our breathing rate to five breaths per minute, we can desensitize these so-called chemoreceptors, which can create, uh, you know, help to quiet feelings of anxiety and help to calm the mood and so forth. So what these scientists found, and this is fasting, they found that to achieve, you know, extreme breath holds, voluntary apnea, free divers uh, leverage their mind as well as the breath. So again, just like I said earlier, they're pairing the two uh, using a multimodal approach. So they're using the mind to meditate to feel present, uh, to feel the urge to take a breath, but then to just let it pass. And they're also using the physiology of sort of desensitizing or increasing the tolerance to carbon dioxide. And so they're doing this. Uh, and so in this particular study, what they found is that this elite free diver uh, per prepared for this extended breath hold uh, by doing some meditative breathing and some lung packing before. I'm not going to try to do lung packing right here because I'll totally botch it up. But if you type in Google, you can read more about lung packing and what that is. And so this is what free divers do. And this is how they're in enabling, uh, sort of overcoming their biologic limitations on the amount of oxygen that they can inhale. So they're packing their lungs and they can get like, I think, 50 or 30 percent more oxygen in their lungs. And so what's interesting here, friends, is we can improve our respiratory muscles and the functional capacity of our lungs. Really important. Now, as James Nestor talks about in the book Breath, you know, there's a lot of interesting research here with individuals who say had a lung transplant. And if they got a lung transplant that was smaller or bigger, it affected their lifespan. Like your lungs are really important. They're vitally important. So we need to talk about that. Now, what the scientists found is actually during the breath hold, EEG signals revealed an increased alpha power in the brain, uh, especially in the central cortex. And uh, this is a brain state, if you're not familiar with the alpha waves. This is more characteristic of being calm, relaxed, mindful. Uh, you know, some of these intentional yogic type practices uh, will leave you in that calm state. And that's characteristic by increased alpha power. A small little side plug, something like L-theanine, glycine, GABA can also increase alpha power. 
And uh, of course, we're not talking about curing, preventing, or treating or diagnosing any diseases, but our sister company, Myoscience, has an amazing sleep formula that is designed to also increase alpha power and improve your sleep and relaxation. It's called Myo Relax and Calm. Definitely check it out. I will put links in the show notes. So there's nutritional supplements, there's products, there's exercises, there's brain states. There's a lot of things that you can do to improve your feelings of well-being and calm. Okay, so alpha power coherence is related to improved mind-body health. Uh, what they found in the fMRI also uh, su is suggestive that the right hemisphere was more dominant after the breath hold. So this individual did a six-minute breath hold for this particular um, study of one, you know, where the neurologist studied the brain and all that. And they, they noted that the right hemisphere was more activated, which is characteristic of more sort of uh, thinking, creativity, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of interpersonal uh, relationships. So if we think about left and right brain, think left brain is analytical, logic, uh, accounting, engineering, math, like all of those skills doesn't, isn't really characterized by synthesizing and creativity and empathy. And so, you know, again, if you're ever agitated, irritated, you're in traffic, you can do a breath retention practice that we're going to demonstrate very, very soon. So I thought that was really fascinating. And then they also found uh, there was an increase in the connectivity of an activity of the default mode network. So if you're new to our podcast, we did a great interview with Lou Lim, who uh, is the founder of the V Light in Canada, Toronto. And we talked more about the default mode network and the olfactory bulb in the brain as it relates to Alzheimer's and brain state. So that's a, a podcast that you should check out with Lou Lim. Okay. Um, curiously, What's interesting here, as I mentioned earlier, is individuals with obstructive sleep apnea have an alteration in their default mode network signaling. So, you know, it's kind of interesting how we go about certain things, whether it's a practice, a breath hold practice or whatever, um, that changes the physiology. So uh, I think that's pretty fascinating. So, you know, going for an extended period of time without breathing if it's intentional, it has a completely different physiologic effect compared to if it's unintentional and your tongue is just collapsing your airway because you're having an apneic event while you're sleeping. And this is, by the way, why mouth taping is so effective and important for brain health and cognition and all of this. And so in summary, it seems that breath holds and brain states are impossible to disentangle. So again, when you're feeling anxious, when you're feeling those uncertain feelings, before you do a presentation, maybe you're going to go on a date um, maybe you're going to interview for a new job or you want to ask for a raise, consider a breath hold retention practice because it will change your brain state. And so this is really important. Now, uh, I'll demonstrate this and I'll just say that Josh Trent taught me this practice. Okay. So definitely check it out. Um, uh, that podcast that we did and, and his information, I will uh, link below. So what I like to do uh, and, and this, I'll back up from the microphone so it doesn't, you know, totally blast your ears here. Everyone has a different strategy. So what Wim Hof has you do is just hyperventilate for about a minute, uh, 30 seconds. I find that just 25 to 30 breaths is sufficient. And I'm not going to demonstrate all of those breaths, but I will kind of just do maybe five or six so you get an idea. So what I like to do is breathe through the nose, just always in training nasal breathing and breathe out uh, pretty loud. And I'm sitting down and focus on your abdomen. This is a great way, friends, by the way, to strengthen your core and some of the, the muscles of the diaphragm and the breathing mechanical muscles. So it's, <laughs> and again, so it's, it's rapid, it's quick. It's, that's what, you know, so you want to be sitting down. Uh, it's normal to experience lightheadedness, okay? Now, if you're just new to this, maybe you do 15 breaths, maybe it's 16, maybe it's 12, whatever. Um, if you feel a little bit lightheaded, you honestly get a little state of euphoria. There's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but just make sure you're not going to fall over and uh, faint and knock yourself and, and hurt yourself. So be sitting down. I like to do this in the morning. I'll take a little DHA, take my adrenal supplements, go outside. I'm facing east and I'll do this breath work and then I'll get in the cold plunge. That's my routine before coffee every single day. Okay. Not getting on the phone, not doing a lot of stressful things, not checking in the news for sure. Okay. Now, on your last breath, when you're doing that in, out, in, out, okay, you inhale all the way and hold. And again, I have my insight meditation timer going and I'm holding for about, you know, it depends, you know, some days it's two minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, other days where I don't sleep as well or I'm stressed or whatever, it's a, a minute and 30 seconds. But the longer that you can hold, uh, the better it is. And now what Josh taught me 
is that that feeling when you want to take an inhalation and you want you want to sort of break your break your breath fast so to speak to inhale just a little bit more and try and go an extra 10 seconds and uh, again, what we're doing here is we're improving our body's ability to tolerate carbon dioxide because we've built up that CO2. As that CO2 builds up, it's telling your brain to tell your muscles to breathe. And so we're trying to overcome that. So then I'll exhale and then I'll repeat. Okay. And you can repeat this. You know, this is part of the basis. I'm giving you just a little cliff notes of what Wim teaches. Of course, it goes into more depth. Um, there's mindset stuff and in, in, on all these different things, but uh, several rounds of this. And so you can do three or four rounds. And afterwards, like you're awake, but you're calm at the same time. It's hard to explain for those of you that have, have practiced breath work, your body is awake, your mind is awake, but it's in a calm state. It's not like that agitation you get from too much coffee. And so this can be very helpful. I like to do this before I film videos, before I do podcasts. When I was in sales, I like to do it before I would have a, a sort of business meeting to have more coherence and to be more calm. Now, this can also be used for some of you that do cold immersion therapy, that do cold showers, because this heats up your body as well. So you can do it before or after. Um, so I found, you know, if I get really cold and my muscles are, I'm having, inducing that shivering response, I would do the breath work after to create some heat within the body. So again, uh, this can be an amazing tool. Now, after you do your breath work, then you can do, say, say a Vipassana or a a Vedic or a transcendental meditation. So Vedic and trans transcendental are very similar. Uh, your teacher will give you a mantra and you're gonna repeat that mantra over and over in your mind and that helps calm the monkey mind. So there's so many different ways to go about it. And again, friends, after failing to successfully incorporate meditation into my life, it was breath work that really helped sort of bridge that for me. And I would like that to be the bridge for you. So please get after it. Support Josh Trent. He has a great course. Check out Wim Hof. Uh, check out Aaron Alexander. He also taught me a great technique. And make it part of your life because stress management, really important. And again, is that 540,000 hospitalization visit found, uh, you know, anxiety and conditions of previously diagnosed fear disorders were the second leading risk factor for death when it comes to SARS-CoV-2. So you gotta take stress management seriously. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, you can hit that like button. You, you can subscribe. Leave us just a little bit of feedback in iTunes. It goes a long way to help share this message if you found it helpful with people like you that are like-minded. So we'll catch you on a future episode down the road and good luck in your breathwork practice. Yeah.